Okay, this is a description of a hydraulic retarder. So in your camera, you're seeing an image of a retarder off of the, a Caterpillar scraper. This image is showing a retarder off the back of an Allison transmission. Okay, hydraulic retarder is a supplemental brake that is going to slow a vehicle through the use of hydrodynamic hydraulics, which means we're using the energy of a moving stream of oil. We're going to use a hydraulic retarder on downhill grades to prevent engine overspeed and greatly reduce the use of the service brakes on the machine. Now the engine overspeed idea is important in that because our hydraulic pumps are driven by the engine, if we were to overspeed the engine, not only do we risk damage or risk the, run the risk of doing damage to the engine, but we also run a very serious risk of running the pumps too fast and cavitating the inlet of the hydraulic pumps. Now, retarders just use free energy. They use the energy of the moving vehicle and then we convert that to heat and we slow the vehicle down. Now, retarders have some drawbacks. Number one is they are only a supplementary brake. They will not slow a vehicle, I'm sorry, they will slow a vehicle down, but they will not stop a vehicle. They become actually less or less effective the slower a vehicle goes. Uh, we are going to slow the vehicle down by shearing oil, so therefore we're going to generate heat through the shearing of that oil, and we have to deal with that. And then also, the retarder has a lag time or a delay from its initial turn on till the point that it actually begins to apply or apply braking force to slow the vehicle down. Now retarders are identified by their locations. So this retarder here off this Caterpillar scraper is actually mounted on the back of the engine. This would actually be classified as an input retarder. Your module states that input retarders are mounted between the torque converter and the transmission. In fact, an input retarder can be mounted in front of the torque converter as well. Like in this case, it's on the back of the engine, so it's way in front of the torque converter. The only drawback here is that if I mount a retarder ahead of the torque converter, the torque converter has to be equipped with a lockup clutch to ensure that we're actually going to slow down the drivetrain of the vehicle, not just the engine. The other place to mount a retarder, and this is where this retarder is from, is on the rear of a transmission or an, what we call an output retarder. So this is off of a um, transit bus and this retarder would be mounted on the back side of the transmission or the output side of the transmission. You can also have a third mounting location which is a remote mount location and that is where the retarder is mounted on the drive line. Now going back to the input retarder, one of the advantages of an input retarder is Based on the fact that a retarder loses its effectiveness as the vehicle slows down or the rotational speed slows down, by mounting a retarder in front of the transmission, if the operator was to downshift the transmission while using the retarder, they would constantly be ramping up the speed of the retarder rotor, which would increase the braking effort of the retarder. Now the actual retarder itself, very simple build. There's only one moving part in the retarder and that is called the rotor. And here I've actually put some white spacers in here to lift the retarder out of the housing or lift the rotor out of the housing. Understand then if this is connected to the engine that this rotor is going to rotate and this rotor is connected to the engine crankshaft. So whenever the engine's running that rotor is turning. Now the only difference is when I actually want to use retarder we are going to fill this housing inside here with oil and then this rotor is going to shear through that oil kind of like a torque converter in reverse and that shearing of the oil is going to slow the machine down. If I switch to the other camera and we show this Allison retarder I cut away a portion of the case on this retarder and so you can see the actual rotor inside here And this is connected to the open side of the transmission, so whenever the transmission is driving and the drive shaft's turning, this rotor's turning. Now I cut a section of the rotor away right here, 
And so you can see that there's fins on the rotor and there's fins on both sides of the housing. And again, the housing is going to be empty until we actually need to re use the retarder and then we'll fill the housing up with oil and that'll slow the vehicle down. Now it's that delay that it takes to load or fill the housing with oil that causes that lag time. To, either, to decrease that lag time, a lot of retarders, especially on on-road machines where the transmission pumps aren't quite as high volume as they are in off-road machines, they will incorporate an accumulator. And the idea of the accumulator, the purpose of the accumulator then is to drop or decrease the lag time by fast filling the retarder housing or partially fast filling the housing with oil to slow the machine down. Now the retarders, most retarders are set up that they don't work on a either 100% on or 100% off. If I only partially fill the housing, I can get a proportional amount of braking. So if the operator of an off-road machine is trying to maintain a specific speed down, say uh, a grade, they might only have to apply 50% of retarding effort off the hydraulic retarder, which means they would only fill the retarder housing 50% full to make it work. Other downside with retarders, or not downside, but one of the operational concerns with a retarder is if the machine is being used in very hilly terrain, and requires a lot of use with from the retarder, the oil maintenance schedule for the transmission oil may very well have to be modified to shorten the oil change interval. Now where a hydraulic retarder is mounted hydraulically is, the control valve that diverts the oil into the retarder is actually mounted in series between the torque converter outlet and the transmission oil cooler inlet. That's where we're going to mount the actual valve. We then mount the retarder in parallel to the valve. So the oil coming from the torque converter always has to go through the retarder control valve, but it may not be diverted to the retarder. It might be directed straight through the valve to the oil cooler, such as when a machine is climbing a hill and we're using the torque converter. If we're going down the hill, the oil coming out of the torque converter won't be as heated as much because the torque is not working. The oil coming out of the torque converter will then go into the retarder control valve. In the retarder control valve, it will be diverted in parallel into the retarder. From the retarder, it comes back out into the control valve and then is sent on to the transmission oil cooler. And just like any other system, the oil outlet from or the oil coming out of the oil cooler is headed for the transmission lubrication circuit.